The Galarian Expedition event is starting around the world in Pokemon Go, and today I want you guys up to speed for this event because it's arguably one of the best events of the year. Let's get into it. Okay, this event is going down October 4th, 10 a.m. to October 11th, 8 p.m. your local time. And the biggest part of this event is going to be the release of Shiny Galarian Birds. Yes, Shiny Galarian Articuno, Shiny Galarian Zapdos, and Shiny Galarian Moltres will be available during this event, and it's been confirmed by Niantic after the event as well. So for the rest of the, the, the history of the game, you can get these. We're gonna talk a bit more about those in a bit, but first we also have Pokestop showcases with event-themed Pokemon during this event, and those event-themed Pokemon will be the exclusive wild spawns of Nidoran Female, Nidoran Male, Abra, Magnemite, Aeron, Whalmer, Sfeel, Beldum, Shinx, Fungus, Dedene, Wulu, and rare spawns for Chansey, Absol, and Molga. We'll also see exclusive five-star raids for the raid boss Zamazenta in the Hero of Many Battles form, which can be shiny for the first time around, so a lot of new shinies released during this event. We'll also have exclusive field research tasks to go ahead and complete during an event to earn you items, XP, status, and encounter with event-themed Pokemon, as well as the $8 masterwork research for the master ball yes this is a eight dollar usd ticket you can buy which will get you the masterwork research that will get you one master ball eighteen thousand xp ten thousand stardust counter with event themed pokemon and more by the way this research does never expire so if you do buy it you can complete it pretty much whenever and you'll have this thing forever it is a special research It'll also be exclusive collection challenges during the event to get you xp ultra balls and encounter with event themed pokemon i don't know what all the research is yet and currently right now i'm actually in new zealand so i'm gonna go ahead and link below in the pinned comments where you can go ahead and check out leak duck where they will be adding the research if you're curious what the tasks are for the masterwork research or the field research or whatever check the first link in the pinned comments okay let's talk of course about galarian birds because that's probably what everybody cares about how do we get these shiny galarian birds and what are the best tips for them well first thing i do want to go ahead and clarify people are asking can the shiny galarian birds run no they cannot run do not worry you're not going to encounter a shiny galarian bird throw a pokeball at it and they will run how they will act is like shiny legendaries we've had in the wild in the past like shiny entei shiny lake trio shiny azelf in which you can throw pokeballs at them they will never Never run, but they're still gonna have the same catch rate. Yeah, so you can end up throwing 50 Pokeballs, 100 Pokeballs at a shiny Galarian Articuno. It will never run from you, but it's not gonna be easy to get into the Pokeball. Also, in terms of shiny rates for the shiny Galarian birds, my guess is they're gonna be one in 20. This is obviously a lot of testing to figure out, but legendaries have always been a one in 20 shiny odds, and I don't see why this is gonna be any different. The one in 20 shiny odds also went for the shiny legendaries we've had in the wild in the past as well. So most likely these will act the exact same way. Now, what is my number one tip for the shiny Galarian birds and this event? And honestly, events of the future if you're trying to hunt these roar of time roar of time is a adventure effect on dialga you can use for dialga candies and stardust and what it'll do is going to freeze your premium items and yes it can freeze your daily adventure instance if you use daily adventure instance then you go ahead and activate roar of time you can freeze it and theoretically have roar of time for 24 hours and have a daily adventure instance running for 24 hours which i've done i've literally made a video on this a lot of people want to see me run back the 24 hour daily adventure instance challenge and we definitely will be doing it when i am back in ottawa so stay tuned for that video where we see how many shiny glaring birds can we get in 24 hours but yes if you have roar of time use it during the event go ahead and freeze your daily adventure instance for as long as you can to try to get as many encounters with shiny glaring birds as you can now they are obviously rare and they're not going to be guaranteed but worth a try. If you don't have a rough time, by the way, go ahead and see if you have a friend or someone in the local area that can trade you one. At the end of the day, all you need is a Dialga with the mover of time and you could use the adventure effect. So if you're a new player and you missed out on it, go ahead and try to get one traded to you in your local area. I'm sure people have plenty of extras, just non-shiny Dialgas they can trade to you. Also, it's very important to note when you are using daily adventure instance, it only works if you're moving. So using these, if you want to try to encounter these things, make sure you're moving at a quick, efficient pace. Try to get as many encounters with these Pokemon as you can. There also is a theory if you go ahead and hunt in weather boosted conditions, aka windy weather, when all three Galarian birds are boosted since they're all flying types, there's a higher odds they go ahead and spawn. This is kind of a hard theory to prove, but it is a potential. So if you do see windy weather out there, maybe that's the best time to go ahead and use your daily adventure incense if you want to encounter a shiny Galarian bird. Finally, you could use the incense refresh trick, which is an, again, a trick that some people don't believe really works. But if you find your instance is kind of struggling to spawn Pokemon, go ahead and open up your friends list, close your friends list. What this does is it refreshes the map and it will kind of ping a spawn to go ahead and appear if it is time for a spawn to appear. A great trick you can go ahead and use if you want to try that. All those are tips to use to try to encounter more shiny glaring birds. But again, don't worry. These things are going to be available after the event for the end of time. So you can pretty much just start grinding shiny glaring birds, see if you can get all three. How fast can you get all three? How rare are these going to be? I don't know, but I'm excited to go ahead and try. Nonetheless, we also do have exclusive spawns during that. So let's get into that part of the event, starting with what are the best wild spawns to grind during the event? First of all, Abra is in there, which evolves into Alakazam. Alakazam, of course, does have a mega form in Pokemon Go. We also have Magnemite in 
there, which evolves into Magnezone, which is a top electric type ray attacker and a top Pokemon for the Master Premier Cup. We have Aeron in there, which evolves into Aggron. Aggron also does have a Mega Form in Pokemon Go, if you want to go ahead and get that Pokemon. We have Beldum in there, which evolves into Metagross. Metagross, of course, does have a Mega Form, not in Pokemon Go yet, but you can go ahead and prep it. And Metagross is a top Steel type attacker and a top Master League Pokemon. We have Fungus in there, which is a Pokemon that gets you boosted Stardust, getting you 500 Stardust per catch. So if you want to get more Stardust, catch the Funguses. It's like catching five Pokemon in one. We have Dedenne in there, which does he play in the Electric type Cup, if we see that Cup return. We have Chansey in there, which is the number one gym defender in Pokemon Go. If you need some Hundo Chanseys to throw into gyms to be really, really annoying, you can go ahead and get those during the event. And also Chansey does see some play in some limited cups from time to time. We also have Absol in there, which Absol does have a Mega Form in Pokemon Go. You can go ahead and get a good IV. I still need a Hundo of that. And finally, Emolga, which again is good in the Electric type Cup, if we ever do see that Cup return. Now, in terms of raids, we don't really know what the non five star raids are going to be, but we do know is we do have Zamazenta in the Hero of Many Battles form appearing in the five star raids. Now, is this Pokemon good? Unfortunately, we just had Zashian, and the Zashian is just kind of a better version of Zamazenta. Zamazenta doesn't see a lot of play in raids at all. It doesn't really have the correct moveset. And in PvP, Zamazenta is going to be ranked 72 in the Master League, and in the other leagues, not really good. Overall, Zamazenta I find is like a worse version of Zashian since they have very, very similar movesets, just different typings. It's a cool Pokemon to go ahead and grind, but this one is going to be more for the shiny. And if you really want something good for the Master League, I hope you rated Zashian while I was there. Now we do have, of course, a bunch of cool different wild spawns. So let's talk about some candy tips and best ways to grind candy during the event. Starting off with using pineapple Berries or regular pineapple Berries for multiply cash candy by two and silvers by 2.34. Go ahead and use pineapple Berries on any of the rare spawns or spawns you want candies for, Beldums, Chanseys, Absols, all that stuff to grind a bunch of candy. Now, normally I would recommend you use Spatial Ren during the event to go ahead and see Pokemon from a further distance, but Roar of Time is gonna kind of overtake that during the event. So I would recommend not really focusing on that and trying to use Roar of Time as your adventure effect of choice during this event. But what you can do is you can Mega Evolve a Pokemon. If you don't know when you Mega Evolve a Pokemon, any Pokemon you catch that shares a type with the Mega will get more candy, XP, and XL candy for catching Pokemon of that type. Which type of Mega should we Mega Evolve during this event? I've gone ahead and made the conclusion that I think a Steel type Mega, which will get you more candies for Magnemite, Aeron, and Beldum, is probably gonna be the best option to go ahead and Mega Evolve because all three of those are useful Pokemon with XLs. Another option though is Mega Evolve a Dark type Pokemon, as I'll get you more candies for Absol, which is a rare Pokemon and a hard Pokemon to get candies for. Overall though, in my opinion, a Steel type Mega, something along the lines of a Mega Steelix, a Mega Lucario, or a Mega Aggron is probably the best thing to Mega Evolve during this event. It's not really worth Mega Evolving to get more candies for the Galarian Birds since they're so few and far between. So try to focus on that to get more candies for those Pokemon. Also trade away Pokemon is the season of max out, which means every time you trade away a Pokemon, you're guaranteed an XL candy and even some more regular candies. So saving any of these Pokemon, Beldums, Absols, Chanseys, trading them away to your friends, you're guaranteed XL candies for them. It's a great way to grind candy. Finally, go ahead and transfer Pokemon. Unfortunately, there's no more two-time transfer candy event in the month of October, unless, unless, unless the Halloween event, because generally the Halloween event does have a two-time transfer candy bonus. I don't know at the time of making this video, it might have already been announced, but you can go ahead and hold on to some of these rare Pokemon like Beldums and Chanseys and cross your fingers because hopefully we have the bonus of two-time transfer candy during the Halloween event part one or part two this year. Finally, let's talk about Platinum Mail tips. You need 35 Platinum Mails to go from level 48 to 49 in Pokemon Go. Which one should we be working on during this event? Starting, of course, with Type Metals at the bottom. If there's any of these you haven't completed, you need to catch 2,500 of every single type of Pokemon. Go ahead and work on those. We have a huge variety of types of Pokemon in the wild. Also, shout out the Scientist Metal. Evolve 2,000 Pokemon. Now, Abra is a wild spawn during the event. If you don't know, when you receive an Abra from a trade, you can evolve into Kadabra for 25 candies, but then it's going to be completely free to evolve it into Alakazam. So if you and your friend catch a bunch of Abras, you guys mirror trade them, you can then go ahead and technically do two evolutions for 12.5 candy each if you just do the math and grind a bunch of evolutions to work on your scientist metal that are going to be very very cheap in terms of candy resources now i did mention earlier we know zamazenta's the five star raid bosses we're not sure what the other raid bosses are going to be but most likely we'll get a huge variety of different raid bosses and if you haven't raided some of those raid bosses at least once do one raid towards them to work on your rising star metal defeat 150 species of pokemon in raids for example i don't know if abra's in raids and you've never raided abra once do one abra raid it'll get you a point towards this metal if you want to complete it finally as i say for every event there's always showcases going down try your best to win them to work on your showcase star metal win 100 pokestop showcases which will get you an encounter with the phd pikachu right at the end which is a very very rare pikachu to have let me know if you already have it or not guys if you enjoyed this event watch the one below i'm actually in new zealand right now so i'm probably trying to be one of the first people in the world to catch a shiny galarian bird we'll see if i can do that but i wish you guys the best of luck with the shiny galarian bird luck if you have any tips for other trainers who might be trying to get them drop them in the comment section below we'll catch you all next one fall for tips peace